Well, for two years, I worked at the um, Wigmore Health Club. And while I was there, I was in, well, Major Ferguson was my client. And um, he paid me for favours rendered after his massage. The latest in a long line of Dunleavy scoops. An exclusive interview with the London prostitute who claimed to have had sex with the Duchess of York's father, Major Ronald Ferguson. He impressed you as a father figure? Well, no, he didn't impress me as a father figure. What he was doing, I mean, my father never did that. <laughs> you couldn't get better vintage Dunleavy. Smart, aggressive journalism that's landed him a world exclusive and 100% pure sensation. In plain, honest terms, why did Major Ronald Ferguson, father of Duchess of York, why did he go to the Wigmore Club and see you? I can't say he went, just went there for sex. He went there for sex with me, but, I mean, who knows what he really went there for. They've labelled you over the last <coughs> ten years Mr Blood and Guts. Yeah. It's not very flattering, is it? It doesn't bother me. Just spell my name right. Steve Dunleavy isn't just an Aussie who came to New York City, he virtually is New York when it comes to crime and scandal. Tonight, he's given a place of honour in a patrol car on the way to a drug bust. What have we got here, officer? You got him? Where is he having breakfast tomorrow? Q Gardens. Q Gardens. He'll be out tomorrow. <laughs> but this is really kid stuff to the man who symbolises tabloid journalism at its best and worst. Have you ever told lies to make a story better? You mean in print? Yeah. No, I haven't told any lies to make a story better. Uh, I've often omitted the truth in getting a story. Isn't, um, isn't omitting the truth sort of being untruthful? Well. I'll leave that to you. And what stories he's had. A long, hard drinking bout with Cuban leader Fidel Castro, the first interview with the Boston Strangler, the last interview with actress Sharon Tate before her murder by the Manson gang, and then an interview with Charles Manson himself. Dunleavy simply made his way into the cult leader's Death Valley hideaway and paid $12,000 for a pre-arrest exclusive. Uh, it was a fascinating story. It was worth every cent of that $12,000. But it was the Dunleavy Eye view of Elvis which made him famous and infamous across the United States. For $50,000, he bought the secrets of three of the singer's bodyguards, then broke the story of Elvis's bizarre lifestyle and his drug addiction. I got uh, dead snakes, uh, I got live spiders, I got a hearse arriving at the office two or three times with flowers. People didn't believe it, and of course then it came out. It was really the first distaste <coughs> the American public had ever had of Elvis Presley. Yeah, I fear so, I fear so, mm. and uh, very tragic story. Dunleavy's career has always been closely linked with Rupert Murdoch's invasion of the US media. I love to, do I get any Dog! Hey, mate, how are you? Yeah. His reporter's contact book these days reads like a who's who of the highest and the lowest in the land. Hi there. Steve Dunleavy and Mike Munro to see John Lester. Inside the notorious Sing Sing prison. If you slam it, I'll be right with you. And Dunleavy keeps in touch with old mates, like underworld figure Johnny Lester. How's it going, man? Lester got 25 years for bashing someone to death with a baseball bat. It's only been a month. Hi, Steve. How are you? What's the biggest but at the top of the heap, Dunleavy's got enough clout to tempt New York's mayor, Ed Koch, away from his $25 billion city budget to lunch. I knew him when he uh, sounded, uh, uh, you know, so Australian, uh, you could, uh, you know, pick him off a uh, koala bear tree or something. <laughs> it takes no bullshit uh, from anybody, and I think that's terrific. Uh, and he has a kind of a Errol Flynn look and uh, dash about him. So he's a big hit here. And a hit he is. Now the Dunleavy style has translated to television. He stayed on the payroll when Rupert Murdoch bought Fox Broadcasting Network two years ago. And inside the house, the bloody carnage was just as shocking. 
Mr Blood and Guts became the star reporter on Murdoch's first current affair show. And it's called, curiously enough... You might think this kid got a bum rap, but that's for you to decide. The Australian accent dominates the offices of a current affair. There's Ian Ray, its executive producer. I'm beginning to think I'm talking to Marvin Mitchelson. <laughs> the show's senior producer is Peter Brennan, formerly of Good Morning Australia. One of the other reporters is Gordon Elliott. So for American frontman Mori Povich, he's just simply learned to cope. Mori, how do you feel about this Aussie invasion? It's, it's exceeded my worst fears. It's really... <laughs> Ask producer Brennan about his star reporter and you get a double-edged reply. Will Dunleavy do anything for a story? I don't think he will do anything, but I just haven't heard of anything he wouldn't do. What does it take to be a good newsman? I think you just have to be curious, first of all. Uh, one of a better word, or a worse word, a bit of a busybody. Uh, my father always used to say that uh, being a newsman is a cross between a pimp and a private eye. Pimp or private eye, maybe, but there was nothing wrong with his exclusive with Panama's Colonel Manuel Noriega. Are you telling me you were framed? Totalmente. Totally, yes. In American political terms, a real bombshell. Big enough to make Dunleavy the first Australian reporter to be awarded a television Emmy. Anyone I've forgotten, I apologise for, but this really is for them. Thanks very much. Barbara, how long have you been involved in this business? Well, um... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got to think about this. Is there the right say, words? Well, you can just say, <sighs> I, I started... <clears throat> in an escort agency when I was 19. Mm. And the reason was I wanted to go to college. The critics may harp at his tactics, mm. but Dunleavy keeps coming up with the goods. Of all the Bloodhound TV reporters, he was the one to find the woman who regularly had sex with Prince Andrew's father-in-law. And the indiscretions of Major Ronald Ferguson are the stuff which keeps the myth of Mr. Blood and Guts alive and growing. He was very discreet. Yeah, and so was I. Well, until this. <laughs> You'll never retire. I mean, you, you oh, just keep God, going. I would hope I'd never retire. Until you drop. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I'd never retire. And when you do drop, God forbid, it'll be on a story? Well, it'd be a good way to go. Um, I don't want to make it too, sound too romantic, but, uh, yeah, dying in the saddle's not a bad way to go. Yeah. Take that, not literally, of course. <laughs> not <laughs> Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.